Hello and welcome to our third episode of Buzzy Talks. We enjoyed the summer and hope you did too. Now it's time to get back to business as usual and we are happy to kick off the second part of the year together with you and our guests this month. Today we are talking to Captive Office Architects, a Belgium-based interior design and architect firm. We've invited them to join our podcast not only because they are one of our buzzy friends, but also because they have a very interesting approach to office design. Previously, we asked you what you would like us to cover, and design thinking was one of the topics. So, therefore, we will dive into the subject with Captive today. But first, let's talk a bit about design thinking as a concept. It has been used in a variety of sectors and businesses, and the fact is, it's about much more than product and business design, leadership, and organizational change for that matter. It also applies to office design with its human-centric core. More specifically, we can talk about it as a set of rules or principles that guide designers from ideation to testing prototypes, with people's needs being the center of every step and decision. It's crucial to gain an understanding of what people need, how they think, and even how they behave. But how is this relevant in terms of office design? Well, think about it. Workspaces are often a melting pot, a place where people of different backgrounds, generations, and even personalities come together all expecting that the requirements for the workplace be met. Some want complete silence and privacy, while others prefer an open environment fostering collaboration with easy access to co-workers. For some, it can actually be too quiet. Therefore, offices should be designed to fit the teams working there and not the other way around. And it's here the concept of design thinking comes in. It's about putting people first and making informed decisions based on their behavior and needs. So, with this short introduction, let's look closer at how Captive approached office design and which characteristics they borrow from design thinking to create happy, healthy workspaces. I'm sitting here with Benjamin and Ben, both working at Captive, and together we will entertain and inspire you the next 20 minutes or so. So, first, let's get to know Captive a bit better, and Benjamin and Ben, what can you tell us? So, um, Captive, we started Captive about two years ago, maybe a bit more, so I guess our second anniversary was uh, one month ago. Um, and we started Captive with three people, uh, Bert, Sven and I. Um, and the reason why we uh, wanted to start Captive is because we wanted to get more personally involved in our project and have like a very personal contact with our clients. And we believe that when you work in, a, in, larger, um, in larger companies on a, or in a, in a larger office, you often lose like the personal touch with your clients because it's all one big structure. Um, and so we said, okay, so we, we love what we do. Um, we believe and still do that we're good in, in, in the things we do and in services we provide to our clients. Um, and so we thought, okay, let's just give it a try, the tree, see, see where it takes us. And uh, so yeah, here we are now, six people uh, who still love uh, and, and, and you know, love to create uh, things for our clients and provide the best services. So what type of projects are you typically working on? Which kind of clients are you working with? Can you elaborate a bit more on this as well? We uh, do B2B, uh, so we don't do anything residential or uh, you know, private, um, private homes. So we do uh, office design and only office design. Um, so our clients go from small, uh, small companies, from 10 people, to the larger... Uh, let's just wait until that passes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Until the larger uh, companies, uh, I think our largest project now is 400 people. Um, so it's really, it's from small to big and everything in between. That's a bit of our companies. And from industries, I guess every industry. So we can go from European associations to like uh, typical brands and, and typical, uh, you know, companies. So it's really, it's very, very diversified in, in types of companies. So... Benjamin and Ben, in the beginning we mentioned you have a very interesting approach to office design, one that borrows certain characteristics from design thinking. Can you elaborate a bit on how you initiate a design project? For instance, what are some of the steps that you typically take? I guess uh, our main projects have three uh, big phases, three big steps. Um, where in the beginning, so as I, as I said, so clients often or they move to another building or they want to stay in their current building, but they want to change the way they are working at this point. Because they see it's very important that uh, to attract new people and especially young, young generations. It's not just about having a nice car or having the, you know, a lot of money at the end of the month. 
It's also about having a very nice and agile place to work. So they don't want to sit in an office all alone uh, the whole day. They want to you know, be connected to other people and be able to collaborate and to be social during the day. And so companies start to realize that now. And so the first step in, in, in a new office is actually the, the study phase where we uh, analyze the way they are working now and the whole internal structure now. And then we try to see, okay, where do you see yourself in about five to 10 to 15 years? And how do you see yourself working then? Uh, what kind of profiles will you be working with? Will you be working more in teams or more separately? And so we try to really understand the company, our clients, uh, as well their core business, but also the people working in the company. Uh, and so we do that with interviews, uh, online surveys, uh, we go to them, we sit side by side working with them for a whole day just to get to know their way of working. Um, and then afterwards, once we have all that information, we can start with the design concept, meaning that we start to think about how do we see your future office environment. And uh, it goes from very conceptual, very, it's like we create a dream for the client and then afterwards we see what, it, what is realizable for them. Uh, we try to go as far as possible and then most of the time they, they... And that's where Ben comes into the picture as well. Yes, or... sometimes. I think it's, it's important to, from in the beginning when you have a concept, to check with a product manager like Ben and see how is this even feasible in, you know, in real life. Is yeah. everything I'm doing or drawing here is it something which we can create? Yeah, we try also uh, to listen to the building, to the to the space we we have, uh, and that's uh, uh, more uh, technical uh, analysis uh, of the, of the space we we've got, because uh, there are um, some things that's very important to take into account uh, concerning uh, ventilation, mm. uh, stuff like that, heating, uh, floor. Uh, so yeah, not everything is possible. Uh, so we have to check uh, the design with uh, the. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I guess the second step is actually the design process, which takes a lot of time. I mean, for our uh, biggest client last year, I think the pre-study phase was about eight months, where the execution phase is only four months. So the study phase is often much longer than the actual execution of the project. Mm. <laughs> And then the third phase is, is the execution uh, of the project. So we, um, we do it in two ways, or we do project management for our clients in which we guide them through planning and budgets and, and contracting uh, the, the subcontractors. Um, and another phase is where we are the general contractor. So we do an actual turnkey project where we say, okay, um, we are your only um, point of contact and we will execute this project within the budget, within the planning and according to the concept for you. So that's a bit our three main services, of course. And that's the advantage we have because we're a quite small company. Mm. We can be very flexible. It's not like we have one structure and that is the only structure. We try to adapt in, in any way as possible just to be as, as much as, um, you know, providing the best services for our clients. So based on your initial research and workplace study, do you sometimes encounter challenges on aligning what the client wants and needs and what's feasible from a design perspective? I think one of the biggest challenges of one of the biggest challenges we get in, in almost each project is when larger companies, the, the, the person who gets the task to change the way of working is most likely or a facility manager or an HR manager. Mm -hmm. And those are n not the people at the end of the day who will make the final decision. Meaning that if a HR manager or facility manager comes to us and say, okay, we need to adapt our new way of working and start thinking about a new design and we can do the whole study phase and, and have the, the plans and the layout ready and say, okay, this is a really innovative, future-proof uh, concept for this company. It's, it's often when it happens when it goes to the management or direction or to the board, they say, whoa, this is really way above, above our league. This is not something for us. We don't believe in this concept. And we can start from scratch again. Mm -hmm. So that's the big challenge is to convince the, the decision makers in a company that they need to adapt their new way for their way of working. And this is a concept, a new concept is something which will work. Uh, and that, I think that's a big challenge mm -hmm. because once we start the works, I think the biggest part of our job is already, or the hardest part is already done. Mm -hmm. 
um, except you know during works you can always have technical problems or planning problems or, or even budget problems as well um, but those are things you can always find an answer to. Once the project is executed are there any form of follow-up process in place? Do you go back to the facility managers and the people working there or does the collaboration simply stop once the project is done? Well the thing is um, when a project is finished and people start working in their new environment it takes some time for them to adapt and you know it's not like when you have a new office and we can go back to them one month later and ask so how do you like it mm -hmm. because it's it's too soon um, most of the time the companies self do like internal surveys and then we get the results of those surveys saying people love the environment people love the new furniture they love the look and feel they love the way they are collaborating or they don't at all I mean happens sometimes <laughs> um, but uh, you know, after a few months, we always have to go back, you know, to maybe there's something wrong with a, with a piece of furniture or with, with some technical thing that has stopped working. And once we're there, we do have a conversation saying, so how do you like it? How is it going? Are people happy? Um, things to improve also from our side. Mm. Uh, the services they got from us, do you think, you know, did we do a good job or not? Uh, so did you like working with us or not? And we see that in our uh, business, mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth, uh, commercial or you know publicity is, is the most important so for us it's important to make our clients happy yeah. so they can go and say you know it's captive who did the design or it's captive who did the, the whole project mm -hmm. uh, and so far so good I'll say I think most of our clients are, are very happy and they really recommend us with other clients so mm -hmm. that's, that's nice Going back to the ideation and design phase do you look towards trends to solve some of the specific design challenges? Well, actually, it's most of the time, it's the client who looks at the trends. So before they come to us, they, they think they have a good idea of what a new office should look like. And then, uh, you know, for example, if a client comes to us and he says, you know, I saw on the internet, saw a Google office. I want that. And then we start explaining what a Google office is. And it's not about the design and the furniture. It's about the office culture and the behavior of people working and also the type of profiles working in there. And then they start to realize okay, that's really not the way we want to work. So they see that trends are not always the way they want to have it at the end of the day. So we know, we know which trends are, are, uh, you know, are actual and which are going. And we take them into account because we know also our clients expect us to be aware of new trends. But next to that, we always try to do different things. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't say more futuristic things but you don't, you don't want to invent the water again uh, it's a Dutch expression that I don't know in English reinvent the wheel yeah <laughs> uh, reinvent the wheel that's yeah. it yeah great um, but we we try to think about what new um, things can we do specifically for that client and it can be something very classic which has already been done a hundred new times but it can be reinvented for them or it can be trends as well but I don't believe in looking at trends and trying to implement them in each project because, I mean, then you're just copying things and not being uh, creative. I mean, it's our job to think out of the box and not just read an article about a new office design and then saying, okay, the next project will do that too. Mm. Yeah, it's important to collaborate with, with our client eh? and uh, not uh, sitting on the other uh, side of the table, but uh, on the same side. So we are the experts uh, who will uh, figure out some uh, solutions for their problems. Uh, for example, uh, if they have problems in meeting rooms, uh, connecting with uh, other sites, uh, stuff like that. We also think uh, about uh, the Internet of Things, uh, for example. Uh, what are the possibilities to connect with uh, other uh, sites uh, within the same company, uh, stuff like that. It's more technical, but also important. It appears like you have a very holistic approach and dare to challenge the clients in terms of what they actually want. Can you tell us a bit more about this? You start to realize that companies believe it's important to, to keep their employees um, happy. And, just, and that's where you know the current trend is. It's all about well-being and it's all about health, uh, healthy food and, and being active. And, but that's just one thing. It's one thing, for example, to have a, a room in your office where you can do yoga or where you can, can you know, do certain exercises or relax or even take a power nap or something. 
But if people don't have the actual culture or of doing it, and if management doesn't promote that and say, you know, this is how you can work, and they won't use those those facilities. They, they just won't. It's like nice to have because Google has it or Facebook has it. But if you don't have the same culture or you don't want to go to the same culture, it will never, never work as it should. And then you just have lost spaces in your office. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> And if it stays difficult, uh, it's always possible to uh, organize a, a pilot uh, within a big company. So uh, a part of the company, we use uh, the space to develop uh, a concept uh, that's different uh, of the existing concept. Uh, to yeah. So a bit like prototyping. Yeah, 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 yeah. to yeah. convince uh, people. Uh, and to receive a lot of feedback as well. Yeah, yeah See, absolutely. Uh, you know, if, if they want a new way of working um, and they want more uh, corners to relax, and you would just, you know, we design one corner and see is it actually used. And if you see after three months, nobody has, has used it. You know, it's mm. not the type mm. of room you want in your new office environment. Mm. So it's, it's a good way to see what people want and don't want. Yeah, because the theoretical way, that's one way. Uh, but I can imagine that not everybody uh, has a good view on it. So uh, prototyping, that's uh, a solution for that. Um, we also work uh, a lot with uh, 3Ds uh, and we go far in uh, developing uh, 3Ds. Uh, maybe Benjamin can tell something about uh, the extra <laughs> 3D. Well, we, we were used to... So when you design something, I have a floor plan, that's all good. For us, it's good to have a floor plan because on a client, you can actually explain the organization layout-wise. But then people want to start see how it will look like in real life. And so you show them 3D images, which are, are these still images. And they say, uh, okay, I, I guess I, I, I can understand, look and feel, but I don't know where I am in the building because it's, it's just an image I can really imagine. So now we do like these 360 degree views of each design. Meaning, I don't know if you've seen it, it's like when you hold an iPad and you look through it and you're in the empty space, you can. it's like a bit of uh, VR, virtual reality, but then just simplified and um, it's often nice when we go with the clients and we have like three to four iPads with us and we lay them in, in each part of the building and each 3D view you see is different and then they can actually start turning around and looking at all the space in the building and that's like a new very interactive way of showing them our concept and, and making them believe that it's a good design. <laughs> And so with these words, we end this third episode. Thanks to both Benjamin and Ben for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed their visit as much as we did. See you next time. Take care and stay tuned for our next episode of Buzzy Talks.